Right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. The Penguin Episode 6, The Gold Summit. Boy, howdy. Every single episode just keeps getting better and better. I love this program. I really do. 10 out of 10 TV. We've got two episodes left, and they are setting up quite the finale. Quite the finale. Absolutely unreal writing. You know what? We'll get to the review in a minute. Well, this is part of the review. But you know what surprises me about this? Is that this show just reveals how bad Hollywood and current TV writers truly are. Because if you can make this, why haven't you been doing this before? Like, what is wrong with you? What? What? Like, you've just been giving us utter tripe. And then this just comes out of nowhere. And people are like, wow, this is amazing. More of this, please. And then they just churn out slop for the masses. Bizarre. Bizarre. But anyway, what happens in this episode? Well, this sets up some incredible stuff. Some really, really, really incredible stuff. It lays uh, a really good framework. We hadn't really... You know, Maroney in the last uh, episode, obviously his wife and son got burnt alive, which was crazy to see. I didn't, I didn't expect the Penguin to be as brutal as it has been. But we hadn't really heard much about Maroney from then. Obviously, we knew that clearly he would be upset by this, but we didn't really see too much of that. And in this episode, you really get a feel for it. When uh, Sophia Gigante... You've got to do it with the hand. You know, if you don't do it with the hand, did it, did it really... Did you really say it? Um, anyway, so Sophia Gigante, uh, she's in her house playing some... BDSM game with the former therapist of Arkham who's very clearly being set up as like the Scarecrow, quite frankly. I would imagine anyway. It seems to be that kind of vibe. Uh, and she goes into her kitchen and we see Moroni, uh, Sal Moroni there cooking and reminiscing. It's like, ah, oh, well, you know, uh, my wife taught me all these recipes to pass it down. Uh, and, and Taj said that the yogurt makes it better. Uh, and then he just sort of loses it. And he's like, oh, you know, this weed, we need to pull this weed out. But it, it, it's that laying the framework of his just true horror at what happened. And his revenge that he wants to seek uh, on Oz. Uh, and this is that's basically the whole side plot of this uh, episode. Is Sophia and Sal going around trying to ascertain what is important to Oz because you know Sophia was under the impression that his greatest asset was the fact that nothing is important to him he has nothing that he cares about no one and nothing well she does stumble across the hooker that uh, Oz clearly has uh, affections for goes to speak with her they broker a deal because, of course, Oz just can't help himself and has kept loads of people in the dark and manipulates people. And that's his biggest downfall, actually, is the manipulation behind people. Because it shows nefarious intentions and self-serving intentions. And so when that's exposed by Sophia, the hooker gives up the location of Oz. And flash forward to the end of the episode... We see Sophia breaking into the apartment and uh, the dancing Oz, Oz's uh, mother and Vic. And you know what's going to happen now. Those final two episodes. Oz, Oz's mother and Vic, they're going to be taken. The two good things in Oz's life. I hate to... I, ha I, just, I can't wait to see what happens. I don't know how he's going to react because he has to go... It has to go some length to become uh, a near bloodthirsty psycho villain that the Penguin truly is. You know, he's almost there. But as he said to Vic once, his mother is what keeps keeps him good. It's the good part of him. And, all, and, and Vic has become the good part of Oz as well. Both those two things gone. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get a really interesting Penguin from then on, I think. Really interesting penguin from then on. We actually see Oz in quite traditional comic outfits. He's got sort of furry coat, you know, furry lined, almost like a Sherpa jacket coat thing. Smoking a cigar. Quite 
Penguin-esque from the comics, which I thought was quite cool. But the main drive of this episode is him planning and plotting to take over Gotham overall. And how he's planning to do that. And the clue, you know, the, the name of this episode is what he did, the Gold Summit. Is get all of the individual gang bosses together. The Sullivans. I think it was the Sullivans. The Triads. Various others. Get them all together. And just reveal to them that these people don't care. Sophia Gigante and Moroni's. They don't care. They don't care what happens to them. They couldn't care less. They'll take their turf when the time's right. They don't care. It's out with the old guard, in with the new. They're going to take over Gotham. Which is, yeah, interesting. And the triads push back a little bit. Like, this guy's got no code. He betrays everyone. He killed Alberto. Falcon. He betrayed Sophia. And Oz's rebuttal is quite smart, really. He's like, give me a beer. Yeah, I did do that, but I do have a code. You know, I'm just a poor boy from the east side. I've got to take what's mine. Just like you. That's, their, that's all of their motivations, isn't it? And they all popped a beer. And the gold summit commences. Ah, can't wait. Cannot wait to see what happens. I do wonder if Sophia will take Oz's mother and leave Vic behind. If she does, Vic has sort of begun an arc of villainy himself. He killed that squid guy in this episode, which was quite brutal, actually. Again, some really brutal stuff happened in this episode. And I do wonder if he'll continue his arc of villainy or whether this action... Because he has affections for Oz's mother. You know, he likes her. He's been tasked to look after her. And I do wonder whether the Penguin will either kill Vic because she, he's left behind and he tells her that... He tells him that Sophia's taken his mother. Maybe. Maybe that happens. Or maybe Sophia takes both of them. I don't know. It's interesting. It's really, really interesting to see. But you, they've managed to lay the framework for a very comic accurate, real life representation of the penguin living underground or working underground. You know, he's he's got that issue with with his limp. He's he's got um, you know the the cigars now, the costume now, the, the jacket. Yeah. They've, they've done really, really well with it. And the writing is just just so perfect. Just genuinely so perfect. Now, it could be all-out war between the Moronis and the Gigantes, as in paired up with all of the underbosses of the East Side. Now, that would be really interesting if Oz can concoct a way to get them all to go to war on his behalf with... Sophia Gigante and Sal Maroni. Oh, interesting times. What a great episode. Fantastic writing. And as always, impeccable, impeccable set designs. It's just such a joy to watch. A 10 out of 10 show. But again, laughable because Hollywood just gives us such slop all the time. And then they come out with this absolute banger. And you're like, so there are good writers out there. Please hire them now, please. That'd be good. Stop hiring the detritus of LA. That'd be good. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. Cheers, take care. Bye-bye now.